everyone and welcome to episode 134 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I'm coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband and my two boys. Today is Tuesday the 29th of August and as always, this is my crafting podcast where I talk about all the projects that I've been working on since the last podcast. I was going to say in the last two weeks, but it's been a week longer than that, I think, um, since the last podcast. <laughs> um, welcome. Welcome back to all my regular viewers. And again, as always, hello to anyone that is new and checking out the podcast for the first time. If you are new, then let me know down in the comments because it's always nice to know when new people crop up. And welcome if you are new. Um, what have I got for you today? So I've got a little announcements section at the beginning. I've got a finished object to share. I know, miracle of miracles. Um, I've got a work in progress that I'm going to chat about. I've got something that I want to frog. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some cross stitch, a little bit about some blanket progress. Um, we're going to carry on with the goal setting. So we will check in on our goal setting a little bit later on. Um, I've got a little bit of yarny goodness to share and then I will finish up as I usually do with a little bit of shop news. I am currently actively in the process of dyeing yarn. It is in the oven at the moment. So apologies for the state of my hands. I am currently navy blue. <laughs> um, I was blue and yeah a bit of a mix of blue and navy blue because I managed to spill some dye and it went everywhere and I am covered in it. Um, so should we just get into it this week? Let's just get into it shall we? Announcements. Um, announcements are just a couple of things about some make-alongs. So as always we have the Giddy Yarns make-along that is my continuous make-along that I run all the time um, as a way for me to kind of give back to my customers. Um, so anyone that is using any of my yarn, Giddy Yarns, did I mention that that's who I am? I don't think I did this week. For anyone that is new, I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns. There we go. So if you are using my yarn for any of your projects, as long as the project uses at least 50% of my yarn, I'm not going to be fussy. Like, if you're not 100% sure whether it's 47% my yarn or 53, like, it's fine. It's fine. Roughly 50%. Um, then you can enter in to be in the chance of winning um, a prize. And um, the next prize draw, I draw prizes quarterly. The next prize draw is at the end of all, no, at the end of September, July, August, September. Yeah, at the end of September, losing track of where we are in the year. Um, so yeah, enter your prizes in. You can enter in three places. You can enter over in our Discord group, you can enter on Instagram, and you can also enter in our Ravelry group. Um, details of all of that are underneath the video, so you can find out the hashtags you need and all of that kind of thing. We also have a new make-along starting on the 1st of September, and for those of you that have been around for a while, this one will ring a bell. It's the Halloween make-along. It is the Giddy Yarns annual Halloween make-along. This is potentially the sixth year that I've run it, I think, maybe, fifth or sixth year. Not 100% sure. Um, but it's always so much fun. I love seeing your projects and it is always my biggest make-along of the year. So rules-wise, we're quite relaxed. As long as your project can in some way be linked to something Halloween-y, something horror-ish, something supernatural, um, something that says Halloween to you, then you can enter, basically. Um, works in progress are allowed as long as they're not over kind of 50% finished, um, just to make it fair for those that are starting new projects. Um, and your finished items need to be entered into the same three places. There will be various threads. There will be a Halloween make-along thread in the Discord group. Uh, there will be a hashtag, which I'll put on the screen now, actually, um, for Instagram. And then there will be a chatter thread and a FO thread over in the Ravelry group as well. Um, so enter your finished objects in there going to give you a little bit longer this year so you'll have until the 15th of November just in case you don't quite get those things finished for Halloween I'll give you an extra an extra couple of weeks um, to give you a chance to get things finished um, so yeah that's basically the thing so if your pattern or your yarn or whatever um, can in some way be linked to Halloween or horror or anything like that um, then 
enter away. You can use whatever yarn you want. It doesn't need to be um, my yarn. It doesn't need to be indie dyed yarn. You can use commercial yarn and you can knit, you can crochet. Um, I also tend to extend this one to cross stitch or sewing of any kind as well. Um, so any of those kinds of projects that are Halloween inspired in some way are eligible to be entered. Um, and there will be prizes. Um, if there's any makers out there that would like to donate prizes to the Halloween Make Along, um, then that would be amazing. Feel free to get in touch with me. Details of how to get in touch with me again are underneath the video. Um, and I will also be putting up some prizes as well. I haven't quite worked out what they are yet, um, but they will be yarny kind of prizes, um, which will come your way, basically. <laughs> if you win. So yeah, that is the Halloween make along. I will be announcing it a little bit later this week on Instagram as well. Um, so yeah, that's the announcements, I think. I have got finished objects. I've just seen the postman outside the window delivering opposite. So I'm now wondering whether he's going to come and deliver something to us or, or not. Because if he does, he's... No, nope, he's gone the other way. I think I'm all right. <laughs> um, I have a finished object. I have finished my vanilla socks, finally. Um, so these were knit out of um, Stylecraft Head Over Heels, I think. Um, in the Ben Nevis colorway, we managed to work out. <laughs> okay, slight pause because the postman was coming to our door. He just went a weird way about it. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, a bit of research from you and me and a little bit of help. And we discovered that this is the Ben Nevis colorway from Stylecraft. Um, and I have finished them. As you can tell, I didn't colour match them. I, with commercial sock yarn, I'm never worried about colour matching them. I quite enjoy having odd socks, um, so it doesn't bother me in the slightest that they don't match. I do tend to match um, hand dyed yarn, um, unless I'm working from a 70 gram sock set where I'm a bit limited with the amount of yarn that I can use. I generally do tend to match them, but for commercial sock yarn, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, so yeah. We have a finished pair of socks um, and I want to get another pair of um, commercial sock yarn socks cast on relatively soon um, because I quite like having a commercial sock yarn on the needles, I quite like having a vanilla sock on the needles and I'm kind of leaning towards keeping commercial sock yarn for vanilla socks and then making pattern socks with my hand dyed sock yarn. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of just the phase I'm going through at the moment. I'm sure it'll change at some point. But finally, finally a finished object. It's felt like a long time. Although to be fair, I did finish the gnome, didn't I? Um, but it's felt like a long time since I finished anything other than gnomes. Um, I did pick up a quite old work in progress. This may be familiar to some of you and to some of you it may not. And actually, I've not done most of the knitting on this one. Um, so, a while back, a number of years ago, um, I taught Tom, my husband, how to knit. Um, he knit himself a hat, well he knit a couple of hats, he knit a cowl, um, he quite enjoyed it, and then he decided to knit a jumper for Arthur. And we picked the Flax Light because it's got all the tutorials in it and um, it's an amazing pattern. If you've not come across it, the Flax Light is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, it's part of um, their Simple Collection, which is a selection of free patterns um, and there are tutorials and things linked throughout throughout all the steps of the patterns, making them really easy to follow and fantastic for beginners. They're also exceptionally size inclusive. The patterns start from tiny baby sizes right up to very large adult sizes. Um, and um, it's just a really, they're just really good patterns. Um, so here it is. So now, as I said, he started this for Arthur. He's knitting the size eight to 10. Arthur will be 10 in November, so it's not going to fit him, <laughs> but um, it will fit Jasper, so it's fine. Tom knit the entire body, he did all of the top bit and he knit the body and then he just kind of got to that point that some of us do when we're knitting garments and the sleeves were just too much for him and he hasn't picked it up in years. Um, so I thought if I picked it up now and knit a sleeve, 
then um, or knit two sleeves because you want a jumper with two sleeves not one sleeve um, and knit the sleeves then hopefully Jasper should be able to wear it and at least somebody will get some use out of it and um, so that is what I'm doing typically I could have finished this and I haven't so I have I've just started I've just started the cuff I've just started the ribbing so I've got about an inch of ribbing to do and this sleeve would be finished um, and then I just need to pick up the stitches and knit the second sleeve um, so in theory this should be a quick finish but I picked it up and started the sleeve quite a while ago if you'll remember um, and it's not been a quick finish but I am determined to get this finished soon the yarn that we are using is just some, I forgot what it's called, it's the Drops Baby Merino, um, which is great for kids clothes, it's cheap as chips and it is, um, it really washes well and um, it's, yeah, it's great for kids clothes. I've knit stuff for the boys out of this in the past and they've done both children and still been perfectly wearable and then I've passed them on to other people who um, have, also got use out of them so it is it's a great kind of workhorse commercial yarn um and I don't know if it's got colour I think it's probably got colour up yeah it's the colour 13 I don't know what the colour of this one is because we don't have the yarn band for that one anymore um or at least it's not in this bag um but yeah that's what it is so that's the flax light um and hopefully hopefully jasper will have a jumper relatively soon i did try it on him um when i was checking the length of the sleeves and it's actually a little bit on the big side um he's only well he'll be seven in november um so it is a little bit on the big side which is great because it means he's going to get a decent length of use out of it um so yeah, that is a work in progress that I have actually picked up and I'm trying to get a little bit more, a little bit more done. I just want to clear some works in progress, to be honest. Frogging. There is something that I want to frog. Um, and that is my crunkled socks, unfortunately. Now, it's got nothing to do with the pattern or the yarn or anything like that. I absolutely love these. And I think at some point I will recast them back on again. But what it is... What it is, is the mistake I made. Um, so these are the crunkled socks. It is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Um, and the yarn I'm using for it is um, a colourway from Craft House Magic, one of her music from the movies colourways. Um, this was the one inspired by Dirty Dancing, I believe. Oh, I've just, yep, yeah, you're gonna have to trust me. It was the one inspired by Dirty Dancing. Um, and what I did, I made a mistake. I'm only doing the pattern on the front of the leg, but I managed to mess up and put one repeat of the pattern on the back of the leg. And I thought to myself, it's fine. It won't annoy me. It won't bother me. I'll just do the same on the second sock and it can be a feature. Yeah, no, it's totally annoying me. It's really frustrating me. Every time I go to pick these up, I'm like, ugh, no, I can't be bothered. So I am going to frog them. I am going to rip them out. In fact, we're going to take them off the needles. They are off the needles now. Um, and I will just, I will cast them back on again in the future. Um, probably in the same yarn. And we will just, I can't actually really frog them on camera properly now because there's stitch markers and progress keepers and stuff in them. And I'll, I'll drop everything and lose everything. But there we go. We are frogging those. Lots of good noodles. <laughs> So I am going to rip those out properly and um, I'll keep them in the bag. Um, they're in this lovely project bag, which was very kindly made for me, made for me by a podcast viewer because I wanted, um, I was struggling to find bags for two at a time knitting with the divider in the middle. I was struggling to find them in the UK and um, there's quite a lot of sellers in America that make them, but um, I was struggling, I was struggling to find anyone in the UK that made them or had any available um, and somebody very kindly made me this one so it's perfect for two at a time socks and when I cast these back on I am going to cast them on two at a time um, just to keep that progress a little bit quicker I think um, so yeah one project frogged for now what else cross stitch I have made a fair bit of progress with my cross stitch um, which has been really nice actually. I picked it back up again and I'll, you'll see, I've done a fair amount. 
Um, what I will do is I will pop up on the screen on this side a picture of where I was last time I showed this. Um, it is a screenshot from my last podcast video, so the quality is not very good. What I will try and do is I will try and get an actual photograph this time so that I can show you progress properly. Um, and this is where I am now. So as you can see, I've added a fair amount. I think I've done, we're, we're kind of London, so we've got London Bus, we've got The Crown, we've got um, the London Eye, we've got Stonehenge here, we've got, I'm just in the process of doing, we're heading down into Cornwall, in just in the process of doing um, cream teas, and we've got a Cornish pasty, we've got beach huts. Um, I think I've added the daffodil since. I think last time I did it, I may have be, I think, have I done? I can't remember where I was. I can't remember off the top of my head. You'll be able to see, but I can't remember. Um, so yeah, I'm making some progress with this and it's been nice to just pick it back up again. What I need to do is I need to sort out a light for my side of the sofa because my lovely husband, love him dearly, he has this real thing about not having overhead lights on in the evenings. I don't mind them. And actually when he's away, I'll quite often have the overhead light on, but he's got a thing about having having lower light. So we have to have like lamps and stuff on in the evenings, which is fine, but I don't have enough light to cross stitch when I do that. So I need to sort out a little light, like a clip light or something that I can put um, nearby so that I can actually see what I'm doing when I'm cross stitching in the evening, because that'll make it a lot easier. Um, but yes, that is that one. Oh, I didn't bring it with me. I have to share it next time. I did actually, um, I've really enjoyed, I know I've not kept up with it in the slightest, but I have really enjoyed this. This is a mystery stitch along from um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So basically it was done over six months to, at the beginning of the year. So it's all been revealed now. Um, but it was done over six months at the beginning of the year and each month you got the next little bit of the pattern and I actually purchased a kit so it came with the Ada which is actually, I'm not sure it comes across very well on the camera, it's actually a very pale blue. Um, it came with the Ada, it came with the um, threads um, and I also got the little um, needle keeper as well, there was a little London bus needle keeper as well which I got um, so it came with everything you needed the threads were already on a card with all of the numbers and stuff on so it's really nice and easy to go um, and I enjoyed this so much that I have actually um, purchased the next mystery um, stitch along kit that um, was released recently which was a positivity I've forgotten what it's called a positivity thing so it's like words positivity words and I think you get different words for each bit um but I will try and remember to share that with you next time because it's actually away in my craft cupboard um because I'm not going to start it until I have finished this one um but as you can see progress has been made so it's a step in the right direction um and I've really enjoyed it the other thing I have made a little bit of progress on, but not quite as much progress as I'd hoped, I'd hoped is my um, hexi blanket. So we've, we're moving on to blanket progress now, um, is my hexi blanket. Um, I have added, I've added a fair few of the um, hexagons to this. I've actually popped little stitch markers in all of, I don't actually know if there's a, I don't know I've popped stitch markers in all of the ones that I've added so you can see you can see as we go round which ones I've added um so I have I've added a fair few and I've just been kind of going round the outside adding um and growing it that way um there we go and I think we're back are we back round to where we were before I'm not sure really um so it's definitely grown as you'll see it's grown a fair amount um i have still got um i've still got one two three four five six seven of the hexagons that i had made that need to be added need to be joined onto this one um but it's progress it's progress um, so I am going to keep working on this. I'm going to get these ones added in and then I think what I'll do is I'll switch to another blanket for a little while um, and start working on another blanket because I have far too many on the go. But I feel focusing on one blanket is actually going to help me make a bit more progress on them, basically. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was our goal setting. So let's go and kind of check in with our goal setting. First of all, 
how did you do? <laughs> I know some of you did set goals down in the comments and that was really great. I really enjoyed seeing what your goals were gonna be and um, I like the idea of making this a regular thing and seeing kind of get, like help us motivate each other basically. So again, let me know in the comments how you did with your goals, um, whether you succeeded, whether you've still got a little bit you need to do, what are you gonna set for the goals for the next podcast, which will probably be another two to three weeks. What goals are you going to set to get finished by the next time I podcast? Um, you can always cheat a little bit because, you know, you could wait a couple of days after I've podcast before you watch it um, and then it'll give you a little bit of extra time. <laughs> um, do I advocate cheating? I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, what? yeah, let me know down in the comments. What are your goals going to be? So how did I do with my goals? So... The goals I set myself were to finish my vanilla socks. So that is a great big tick. I finished my vanilla socks, um, which is brilliant. So I'm glad I've got those off the needles. Um, they were one of those projects that just felt like they'd been dragging around for a while and it feels good to get them done. And of course, obviously, to get a pair of socks added to my box of socks, which will be opened in December. Um, I'm not even sure how many are in there at the moment. We'll find out in December. Um, the second thing I set myself as a goal was to um, finish, I'm not going to get them all out because <laughs> I've just had them all out, you've just seen them all, um, was to um, pick up my cross stitch and make some progress on that. So as you can see by the two pictures, I have made progress on my cross stitch. So that is really good. I'm really, really happy with that. And then the third goal I set myself was to get all of those hexes joined, which I haven't quite completed. Um, so I've still got, as I just said, I've still got seven hexes that need to be joined to that blanket. Um, but you know what? I got quite a lot. Were there 19? So I think that that's pretty good. I got 12 joined. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Like, that's fine. I'm not beating myself up over goals that I didn't complete. That's not the point of this. The point of this is just to motivate me to make a bit more and to do a bit more. So I need to set some new goals. So the first goal I want to set myself is, again, to get those hexes finished, to get those hexes joined and get that, that sort of stage of the blanket finished. Um, I also want to keep my cross stitch on there as a goal. I'm not going to set a specific goal as to how much I'd like to get done, but I want to keep making decent progress on my cross stitch. Um, then there's two other goals that I w I've set myself. I would like, and maybe this is a bit of a stretch goal, but we'll see how we go. I would like to get um, Jasper's Flax Light finished. Um, I would like to get that second sleeve done. I would like to get all the ends woven in. I would like it to be finished so that he can wear it. Um, that would be really nice to get that project out of the craft cupboard. Um, and then the other goal I want to set myself is the bookshelf socks. Now, I think I'm looking, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I've, I haven't even got the second one cast on. So these are, let's steal a sock blocker from the vanilla socks so you can see. I have finished one of these socks and I shared this I think on the last episode I'd finished one of these socks um, and I've talked about these before it's a pattern by um, Becky who is Becky Knits here on YouTube um, and it is designed to look like um, bookshelves with the way that the stitch pattern works um, the original pattern that Becky designed has the stitch pattern going all the way around the leg as I often do, I have adapted it so that it's only going down the front of the leg and um, it usually only goes down the front of the foot anyway. Um, I've added um, my own heel and toe rather than the heel and toe in the pattern because that's just what I tend to do. I tend to just go with what I'm used to um, and what I know I can do from memory. Um, but yeah, I finished one sock. The yarn again is um, another Craft House Magic music from the movies one. Um, so I finished the first sock. I have yet to cast on the second sock. Um, so I have got the yarn all caked up and ready to go. The needles are in the bag. Um, so I need to get the second sock cast on. So I think the goal I'm going to set myself, I'm going to be a bit more specific with this one. The goal I'm going to set myself with these is that I would like to get the second sock cast on and I would like to try and get the leg finished. Um, 
yeah I'll be happy if that's what I do by the next time I podcast if I can get the second sock cast on and get the leg finished of these socks um then that will be a decent amount of progress so the goals for the next episode are Jasper's flax light finished bookshelf socks cast on and leg knit hexes finish joining the hexes into the hexy blanket and make more progress on my cross stitch um, so those are my goals for the next podcast so we will see we will see how we get on um, but so far I'm liking the goal setting it feels good um, yeah right next I do have a little bit of yarny goodness to share um, and that is some minis they're gorgeous how good well do these all go together um so as i've mentioned earlier in the year but it's been a while um because it, we've been busy for the last few months and haven't got together um me and erin of henny penny makes are um swapping yarn clubs this year so um she's getting one of my mini sets from my fantasy book club yarn club um, and I'm getting sets from her mini lovers club um, I've mentioned before her mini lovers club um, comes with three solids and one um, speckled or variegated um, she's popping me in an extra speckled or variegated um, just because um, it, my club's five minis so just to even it out um, and I'm probably going to make a blanket or something with these I'm not 100% not sure yet I'm just going to keep them all aside um, but we have got May is these lovely greens June is the turquoisey greens the greens and turquoises and then July is darker blues and purples with again a little bit of greens in there as well um so don't these all the I just loved how when she gave them to me I was just like oh they all go together so beautifully they that's what made me really 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 go for the idea of a blanket because I'm like oh they all they're all just gonna work so beautifully <laughs> um so yeah that is my yarny goodness and then the last thing I've got to talk about is a little bit of shop news. Now, I do have a fair amount to share in shop news, um, so bear with me, but it's all exciting stuff. The first thing I wanted to share in terms of, your, in terms of shop news even, is that the second part of the Beatrix Potter collection, the pre-orders are now open. Um, they will remain open until the 3rd of September, so you've got... Um, half a week or so still to make your decisions um, but I thought I would share the yarn with you so we have got um if I can pick these up properly we have got Benjamin Bunny hold them back a little bit everything's getting blown out with my light today for some reason we have got Benjamin Bunny or the tail of Benjamin Bunny um we have got um the tail of Mr. Todd, which is this one here. They've all got contrast, so you could have sock sets or 100 gram skeins. Um, so that is the tail of Mr. Todd. Um, and then we've got the tail of Jeremy Fisher, which is this one here. The browns and burgundies, and there's some little spots of green in there as well. Um, and Squirrel Nutkin, the tail of Squirrel Nutkin, is this one here. And um, that's four, there's two more. Um, oh yeah, the tail of Pigling Bland, which is this one here. There we go, the tail of Pigling Bland. And then finally, whoops, my favorite one from the collection. Um, is the tale of Miss Tiggy Winkle um, and this is Miss Tiggy Winkle here there we go I am going to do a video um, this week hopefully in the next couple of days I am going to do a specific Beatrix Potter collection video I've got a little bit a little few clips of dyeing to share and then I'm going to kind of talk through the colorways and I'm going to talk through my inspirations uh, the images I used for inspiration and um, 
kind of why I picked the colours I did and stuff like that in that video. So that should be coming up in the next in the next few days. It'll be coming up this week. I am actually away next week, so it may be it may end up happening that I extend um, the pre-order deadline um, just because if I'm away, I might forget to shut it. Um, so you might get a few extra days, but certainly Sunday the 3rd of September is meant to be the final day for it. Um, and of course, because it's me and it couldn't be any other way, there are mini bundles. <laughs> so the mini bundles have got one of each colour and they're available as 10 grams, 20 grams um, and in DK and Sparkle minis as well. Um, so they've got all of the colours, all six of the colours in there as well. Um, and the pre-orders, if you do pre-order, the pre-orders will be shipping at the end of September. Um, the 29th of September is the aim for those. Um, if you've got an existing order, so if you've got a quarterly club, um, which has got you've got down as held hold and ship um, and isn't due to ship until the end of September then by all means get in touch and I'm happy to combine orders for you especially if you're international because I know it can really help to save on postage um, and things like that I've also got two more things coming very soon. Um, so the first one is um, Halloween things. I am doing a 13 day countdown again this year. I enjoyed it so much last year. It was so much fun. Um, last year we did a creature feature, so you had all kind, all the different colours were inspired by different creatures. This year I am basing it on Frankenstein. I'll shuffle this way a little bit and I can pop up the image that I've created. Um, so the whole thing is themed around Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, and it will feature 13 different minis. Um, and you'll dare. Yeah. So the idea is that it's a countdown to Halloween, basically. Um, and so you'll get 13 minis that you can open in the lead up to Halloween, create into some kind of spooky Halloween project. Um, it's not going to be a fade or anything like that. I will try my best to kind of keep them within the same tone so that they'll work within the same project. When I say the same tone, I mean rather than just having random pastel ones and then really bright ones and then dark moody ones I'll try and keep kind of the whole tone so it will work in a similar project um, but it won't be designed as a fade specifically to go together if that makes sense um, but then you'll also have the option to add um, a well I think I'm going to do it as you can order the 13 day countdown and you can add a sock set or I might do them as separate project, separate products actually. I think I'll do it that way. I'll do them as separate products. So you can either order um, a Halloween countdown, a sock set, which will be, again, it will be a Frankenstein inspired sock set. And then, um, or you can order both and have all the yarn because why not? Um, so they will be going up on the 1st of September, which is Friday. Yes. Friday. They will be going up online on Friday. Pre-orders will stay open for a week um, and then they will be shipping out on the apparently the 3rd of October. So international customers, you, I cannot guarantee that your um, yarn will reach you in time to start the 13 day countdown in the lead up to Halloween. Um, just because I can't guarantee how long it will take to get to you shipping wise um, and things like that. Um, but they will be shipping, they will be leaving me on the 3rd of October. That is the plan. And then there is one more thing because I've got so much, so much that I'm packing into the next few months. Um, the other thing is that September the 13th is Roald Dahl Day. So similar, similarly to how um, in January, on is it the 18th of January, I believe, is um, Winnie the Pooh Day. It's like a, I don't know, it's not really a nationally celebrated day, but you know what I mean. Um, it is A.A. A. Milne's birthday on the 18th of January, so it's been allocated as Winnie the Pooh Day. Um, and often on Winnie the Pooh Day each year, I will bring out something that adds to my Winnie the Pooh collection. But I'm going to start a similar thing with Roald Dahl Day on the, looking at the date again, um, on the 13th of September. Um, and each year on Roald Dahl Day, I'm going to, I'm going to um, release a new small little collection inspired by a different Roald Dahl book. 
I don't have the yarn to hand to share with you because it's currently in my oven cooking um, but I will be sharing photos and stuff over the weekend and um, things like that so um, keep your eyes out. I'll send out a newsletter and things as well. But the book I have chosen for the first Roald Dahl collection is Matilda. Um, so I have picked five colourways, five inspirations from the book, um, which I'm going to be dyeing up as um, colourways for this collection. And then um, I will be launching them on the 13th of September. I am aiming she says, I am aiming to launch them ready to ship. I am aiming to have enough yarn dyed that I can launch it ready to ship. So you'll be able to just buy it and order it and I will ship it out the same week. Um, I am away next week, as I said, we're off down to Cornwall for a family wedding. So it's a question of kind of how much can I get packed in to the next couple of days in order to get enough ready to be able to do that. Um, so what I will do if, 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 things start to sell out and things like that then I will open up a quick pre-order and just do them as a quick pre-order as well so that people can still get hold of them because I don't want them to sell out and people to be disappointed um but it will just depend on the numbers that I manage to it will depend on the numbers that I manage to do basically um so yeah that's the new things that are coming to the shop over the next couple of weeks I guess um so yeah that's everything that's everything I think yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop your um, goals down in the comments section. Let me know how you're getting on with your goals, what goals you're going to set for yourself. Um, also, if you're going to come and join in the Halloween make along, let me know what projects you're going to do, um, because that's always fun to chat about what projects people think they might do. Um, if you want extra content in addition to the podcasts and the workday vlogs that I put up then um, I not head over to my Patreon and come and join our vlogger tier or the book club tier over on Patreon and um, come and see what that's all about because we're having lots of fun over there. I'm really enjoying doing the extra videos and chatting about the book club stuff and things like that. Um, you can find all the details underneath the video um, but for now I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you again in a few weeks time um, with another episode and hopefully some goals completed. <laughs> Bye! Yeah.